Hi everyone, Doug Grant here. Um, since this uh, Loom video is going to probably go to a lot of people and do a quick introduction for those of you that are new to this instead of our, our doctors and that that we normally send these to. Uh, Doug Grant, uh, first nutritionist in the NBA, worked for a long time in the NBA with the team's nutrition, uh, being able to do blood work, looking at parameters, helping them with how to create more high performance moments. Uh, now we work with thousands of doctors all across the world, teaching them how to uh, become legendary to help their patients heal faster. Uh, we work a lot with nutrition. Uh, blood work, being able to determine the needs of the patients and work with a lot of uh, high-end CEOs and clients and people just trying to increase their longevity. Well, former owner of Ironman Magazine, chief editor uh, for them for a while. So the purpose of this video really is to do two things. One is to point out a very important uh, point about these high-protein diets, carnivore diets, uh, those things that are really popular right now, set things straight based on the research, and uh, also call out uh, anyone that uh, is claiming that they actually are getting larger muscles and they're huge, like... Um, Gosh, the liver king and that saying they don't take steroids. Even people like Joe Rogan and that know better and have called them out on it. And so um, basically, you just get a lot of people out there promoting different things. It's one thing to promote a certain thing and say some of the benefits of it because there are benefits in any type of most nutrition programs that are out there today. Um, there are some benefits, but it's another to lead people astray and, and lie about like steroid use and those types of things uh, when the research is very straightforward on what happens when you're on a high protein diet. So this video is strictly about one part of these high protein carnivore, Atkins, um, caveman, whatever you want to call them diets, and these extremely high protein diets. Um, one aspect of it, but this one aspect will help uh, people understand the the importance of why a very high protein diet is bad on the endocrine system, testosterone, those types of things in the body. And for those that are extremely uh, jacked and super large muscles claiming that that's, um, it's helped their testosterone and they're not on steroids to get there or full of crap. So I'll call anyone out and we'll um, just do blood work, right? Don't, if you disagree with me and want to stand up, then um, let's do the blood work. We'll send a phlebotomist over and uh, see exactly what's going on. But anyways, that won't happen because they know better. So let's look at this study. So there's different studies out. And I want everyone to understand there's a difference between a study that you can pick and choose things out of it. And you have a lot of that happening nowadays and studies that are based on a uh, system systemic review um, of uh, a bunch of studies. So the systematic review is called a meta analysis. And that's where you take a look at a whole bunch of studies. Um, you take off a lot of parameters, get the ones that are equal. So you can really come up with some good conclusions. Because in all reality, we've known for a long time that high protein, extremely high protein diets actually lower testosterone. And uh, there's a great famous study with natural bodybuilders. Um, those people that are tested and shown that they don't take, you know, TRT, testosterone, tranin, you know, basically any type of steroid type testosterone. And that when you're on a high protein diet, um, your testosterone goes down because in those bodybuilding world of, of natural and drug tested, um, you are going on high protein diets at different times, especially as you're leading up to a show because you want to get reduced the water weight and you're doing a you know, carb depletion so you can carb load. And during those times, um, the research has shown, you know, over and over again that testosterone dumps when you're on high protein and, and on low carb. But this goes a step further. Again, this is a meta analysis on this. So the one point uh, that I really want to make is a high protein diet's lower testosterone. Okay. And so let's really go at it from this. So this was the systematic review of meta-analysis. Again, meta-analysis meaning of a whole bunch of studies. It was 2022. So uh, recent. And they took a look at low carbohydrate diets, uh, high protein. So when you see low carbohydrates, you go through the study, low carbohydrate, high protein diets have endocrine effects. Um, and so the study, some of them are conflicting. So they did this and meta-analysis to see if they can uh, really set the record straight on low versus high carbohydrate diets on testosterone and also something called cortisol. Now, we'll talk a little bit about the cortisol and the importance of that. I mean, I'm huge on that factor. But basically, uh, low testosterone is associated with an increased risk of chronic disease. We're talking type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and so on. We know that's a factor. So we don't want to have low testosterone, not just because we, you know, um, aren't, uh, we don't have the urge and the feelings of, you know, really getting after life or whatever it might be, or the bedroom or wherever it might be, and what's associated with it. We're talking about increased risk of chronic disease, having low T, men and women. But this study was mainly focused on men. And then also they took a look at cortisol. Now cortisol, um, basically cortisol and uh, testosterone kind of have uh, different effects. In other words, there's a reverse relationship between cortisol and chronic risk, meaning that higher levels of cortisol are associated with an increased risk of like cardiovascular disease. In other words, the higher the cortisol, the higher the risk factor versus like with testosterone, the lower testosterone, the higher the risk factor. And it's mainly because um, testosterone is anabolic. It builds muscle, right? State of muscle growth, anabolic. And a catabolic is what cortisol is. Catabolic is catabolism actually tearing down. So if you think if you ate somebody, somebody call you a cannibal, right? Cannibalism. If your body is the self, it's catabolism, catabolic. So cortisol um, is catabolic. If it increases, it makes you catabolic. Your body eats muscle. And testosterone, right, uh, when it's low, basically your body is more catabolic. So low testosterone, high cortisol is a bad combo. Got that? So that's the main thing I really want to point out that they're trying to lay out the first of the study of, to be able to have pe help people understand this. So they did this systematic review and meta-analysis and uh, it was really an interesting thing because they did these, um, these low carbohydrate diets and the high carbohydrate diets and a low protein or higher protein and checked out men's testosterone and cortisol. Um, one of the things that's important to understand, what does that mean when they're on a low carbohydrate, high protein diet? And when you look at it, 
in the study, basically what they did is they said um, that a low carbohydrate diet is, you know, less than 35% in the diet and high carbohydrate diets greater than 35% carbohydrate intake in the diet uh, as total energy. And if you really look at those things um, and you want to uh, take a look at that from a protein standpoint, on average, 175 pound man, 2000 calories. Um, if you look at the numbers, let's say you use 35% for a protein, um, 35% uh, protein intake. If you're on a 2000 calorie diet, um, you're looking at about 175 grams a day, uh, which is about a gram per pound. That's about 35%, right? And so we want to be able to say, all right, so is a gram per pound um, of protein? And above that, we'll call it that high protein. Okay. And below that, we'll call it um, medium or low protein diet. So they did these studies and took a look at it and um, looked at the at this grouping of studies. Let me give you a little bit of background on it is that the abstract, in other words, what they did is they screened over 9,400 total records, 3,200 databases, 6,136 from other sources. Um, and then they narrowed it down once they were able to extrapolate everything that was needed. So here are the ones that, you know, really we can trust and they give us the basic information we need so we can make these conclusions. Um, they were able to um, encompass about 46 reports, 27 studies that they were able to line up you know, side by side and say, okay, what are the common denominators here? And that's the meta-analysis. So let's scan down um, and get past some of the geek stuff so you can really understand what I'm uh, trying to say here. So resting cortisol, they found out that the low carbohydrate versus high carbohydrate diets, in other words, the high protein, when it says low carbohydrate, high protein uh, versus low protein diets on resting cortisol, um, they found out that basically when um, they had, they checked out resting cortisol, there was no overall effect. It wasn't a big difference with resting cortisol or resting state, okay? But post-exercise cortisol, in other words, after they work out, the cortisol levels, the things that make you catabolic, basically they eat muscle, right? Catabolic, catabolism, the things that this, this, this cortisol that eats muscle was much higher on the high protein diet, okay? So when we take a high protein diet, our cortisol levels post-exercise are higher. It means this cortisol that's eating muscle is higher, kind of defeating the purpose, right, of the exercise. And then also they found out that resting total testosterone showed a significant decrease in the high protein diet. So if you're on high protein, your resting testosterone is much lower. Again, increased risk of disease, making it harder to build muscle. Um, however you look at it, not good. Okay, low drive. Post-exercise testosterone was non-significantly higher in the long-term low or high protein diet. So there's long term on the high protein diet. It really wasn't much of a factor, but it was a lot lower um, immediately. Once someone just goes on a high protein diet, the post-exercise testosterone uh, shot down is very low. And that was kind of interesting as you look at it. We won't get into a lot of the details of that. But what we know is this, is that the high protein diets, more than a gram per pound, um, uh, a body weight uh, a day, lowered testosterone levels significantly. So all the time, like consistently, right? And also increased cortisol post-exercise. So we actually have some major problems with that um, because the the resting testosterone, your body needs that testosterone to help build muscle, to help keep uh, the body's cardiovascular system working proper, you know, be able to keep your uh, cholesterol, HDL ratio where it needs to be and those types of things. So post-exercise, going back to cortisol, again from the study showed the increase in cortisol during exercise was greater on the high-protein diets. Again, what we said, high-protein diet leads to more catabolism. That's what cortisol is creating. And post-exercise testosterone was higher on the long-term medium protein diets and lower on the short-term high protein diets. So we know that these high protein diets, uh, more than a gram uh, per pound of body weight um, is extremely detrimental to testosterone. Okay. So high protein, here's the conclusion, high protein, low carbohydrate diets caused a large decrease, okay, lowering of resting testosterone, suggesting individuals consuming such diets may need to be cautious about adverse endocrine effects, the effects of testosterone uh, estrogen in the body. So this was, again, a meta-analysis study showing that there's a problem with testosterone levels when you're on an extremely high protein diet. Thus, anyone that's out there promoting these extremely high uh, protein diets, carnivore diets, those types of things, is going to be on lower, have lower testosterone. Now, do they get some other benefits in that? Hey, we can look at that and we can argue back and forth. And I know you have different people on both sides and, and I'd be glad to get into that on some other videos. But right now, testosterone. And for those that think they can go on extremely high protein, and be able to build muscle or keep their muscle for longevity and everything else um, without the use of steroids is wrong. And so for Joe Rogan to call out <laughs> the liver king and say, look, this dude's injecting steroids like crazy in order to um, be that jacked, he's absolutely right. And I know he, that, again, he denied it, but uh, let's do the blood work and find out. And you know, I think you'll see what's up with that. Just be real with it. Um, the fact of the matter is, the thing that I like about the liver king is that you know he does promote getting back to nature, eat more raw. And he refers people to even some books that uh, from groups that I've studied a lot. And, and um, Weston Price, um, you know, the Pottinger Foundation, a lot of those and that original research that I loved. Uh, and it goes right along with a lot of the other research of the Blue Zones and the Hunzas and those types of things. But 
the research from Lester Price was basically showing that processed foods are really bad for you, that that's the culprit. And I completely agree, and I completely with the liberty on that issue too, is that high processed foods are the problem. And a lot of times when you're dealing with carbohydrates, the problem with carbohydrates is not carbohydrates itself, it is the processed carbohydrates. So to cut out berries and the good ancient grains and, and those types of things is actually completely wrong. And to go on a super high protein diet saying that's the best thing for your health, especially testosterone, le testosterone levels is false based on the, the literature. And uh, if a person's extremely jacked and they're taking in extremely high amounts of protein, um, there's got to be some other factors to get testosterone up. So that's why Joe Rogan and others have said it. And it's, it's absolutely uh, true. Is that if you're really, really jacked on constant high protein all the time, I mean really high protein, and low carbohydrates, one thing to be high protein, high carb. It's another thing to be high protein, low carb. If you're on a extremely high protein, low carb um, diet, your testosterone is going to take a dump. And so there's only one way around that, and that is to take steroids. So the lesson for the day is this. These high protein carnivore diets, um, don't recommend them. And the main reason is because it's messing with your endocrine system. If you are getting benefit from the lower cholesterol and all these other benefits, cut out processed foods. Cut out the processed foods. Have a good amount of protein. Even have meat once in a while. That's not the point here is to get rid of meat. The point is to get rid of processed foods and to really take a good look at the body and say, gosh, we, can, we need our body runs off of glucose from carbohydrates. Just take the processed out. Obey the laws of nature. Eat more raw foods, as I think we all agree with, um, uh, with the liver king and others. Eat more raw foods, but don't think that being on these raw meat and extremely high protein diets is the way to go um, because really the research shows they're not. It's really straightforward. You want to increase man your risk of, of, of colon cancer and problems, go on extremely high protein, a lot of red meat, and those things. The research is very strong with it. So uh, not to argue with you, I just want to set things straight because this becomes a, is a big factor. Just on testosterone today, you go high protein, you lower testosterone. That's simple. Have a good day. Keep chewing raw food.